<clears throat> What's up? Who that? It's Mike. Oh, uh, nice. You should always short stop. <laughs> short stop. Playing position like a man. I like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. We should be live now. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> How is everybody on all three platforms? Today, I'm just going to be doing a birthday Twitch. Going to Twitch for a bit. Do a little bit of, not Twitch, but stream, I mean. Because it's on Twitch and Facebook and YouTube. Yep. Twitch is, Twitch is popping. Got people saying, hey, hey. 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 Hey, uh, cool. Facebook is good. We got someone saying someone's going to bed, but happy birthday. That's oh, William. thank you. So it's William. And then on YouTube, looks like we got people saying uh, notification squad. What up, AJ? Finally a stream. Happy birthday. Oh, notification and... squad. Ah. These are people who are um, looking to be notified when these things go live. And it goes right to their phone or their devices. <clears throat> yeah, you can you can hit the bell icon next to the subscribe, and it'll get push notifications. Sweet, sweet deals. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate y'all. Which one do you wanna do? You wanna open all of them? Uh, all of them. Oh, you mean I have them? I have them all open. Short stop. I have them all open. Short stop. So I'm gonna stream for a bit and then uh, hang out with the wife and stuff afterwards. I'll look, so if I'll you look guys, at YouTube, Michael. Yeah, if you guys have any one? questions, YouTube. He said. Okay. If you guys have questions, feel free to ask them. I'll be more than happy to answer them as much as I can, as many as possible. Yep. And then we'll uh, move on with our lives. Yeah, today was uh, a good day. I hung out with the fams. Uh, it was nice, too, because I went to the doctors today, and you know they were like, yeah, you know, your hormones are really high and could be really bad if we don't take care of it, but like we're going to take care of it, so it should be okay. You know, uh, it's going to be a three month thing. They're going to stick a needle in my butt once a month for three months. Yeah, I didn't know that. Like, I went in there and she's just like, all right, I'm going to do it in your glutes. And I'm like, my butt? You got excited. <laughs> You're like, and she's like, yes, your butt. And I'm like, all right. And so then I just. Like, uh, pulled the side of my pants down. I was like, all right, go ahead. Stab it in. <clears throat> Sucks. Uh, I felt like, uh, my butt feels like someone, like, socked it. We punched it real hard. Yeah. Like, like a, <clears throat> right? Just real quick, like a Charlie horse? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and so I was hanging out with the kids earlier today. We were skateboarding and riding our stuff, so it was hurting every time. But it was fun. Yeah. <clears throat> Welcome to prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was fun, though. It was great to kind of just do it and just uh, hang out with the kids and stuff like that but then uh, yeah like uh, there were some significant changes in the hormones because uh, it was really really high and uh, you know I was like maybe it's something I'm eating because I was eating a lot of uh, soy specifically like a lot like eight or nine servings a day and I just read like articles about like eight or nine servings a day is like super bad for you <laughs> and I was like oh well that doesn't help Cause I was like, I would have like soy milk, and then I would have like cereal that had soy in it. I didn't know, and then the breads that I was buying had soy in them. So it's like I found out it's, it was it's very similar to like dairy when I was started removing dairy out of my diet, and I was like, wait, dairy is like in everything, you know? And so now I'm starting to realize soy is in everything. So I got rid of that, and then uh, I basically knocked like a hundred points off of my hormones. Mm -hmm. It was, it was pretty significant. Uh, she recognized that significance, but she at the same time was like, you still need treatment. And I was like, yeah, of course. I'm not going to, I'm not delusional. <clears throat> you know, I just wanted to make sure that perhaps that was helping out if I reduced it. <clears throat> so now uh, it seems like it does, but we'll see. I'm just going to continue doing this. I'm going to remove soy as much as possible from what I'm eating uh, in a day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then uh, see how it goes down along with the, the treatment. Best case scenario, my hormones are gone. And, or go down to normal levels. And then, not gone, just go down to normal. And then, uh, uh, best case scenario. Oh, people can see you. So those little chonies. I'm streaming, baby. Oh. Yeah, it does. My little dude's naked. <laughs> Walking around. Luckily, his shirt is overhanging his little thing. Um, but yeah, are you guys still there? Hello. 
I was uh, muted because I was typing. Oh, I see. Yeah. The yeah, typing. No. Yeah, it should be. Oh, can nobody see it? Wait, yeah, yeah, it's just the uh, stream oh, right. oh, you know what? <laughs> nobody can see the thing. Oh, my gosh. Nobody can see? Now they can. Oh, <laughs> uh, you guys should have reminded me. I had to, like, I was drawing I didn't know. Time. I thought you were just going into, like, yeah. talking. <laughs> yeah, and everybody in the chat, you guys are welcome. To... Yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's why I was like, hey, it's bad. What's up, bad? Um, yeah, anywho. Yeah, so I removed a lot of that, and so I feel better now these days. And, uh, well, yeah, my, also the audio is available. Yeah. Just making sure. Yeah. Um, like painting anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I didn't right. do much anyways. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, um, after the worst case scenario is that my hormones don't go down, uh, enough or at all. And then I have to do like more in intensive treatments, which I don't want to do. The the one after, like, adding larger doses to my treatment would be, like, radioactive stuff. And I don't want to do that. Because although it might fix and um, improve your your overall condition that you're dealing with, um, it's like radiation. <laughs> it's, like, no good. I'll be feeling sick again. But, the, like, a sickness that will hopefully make me feel better in the future kind of sickness. And so it's... It's an inevitable one, right? But I don't want to do it. So I'm trying to make sure I can avoid it at all costs. That's including uh, being pretty strict with what I eat these days. Weezy. But it went down without me taking the treatment with uh, at all. And so um, it could completely go away if I just do the treatment and eat a little bit better. She said that in most cases uh, it goes down just with the treatment alone. <clears throat> so we'll see. That's good. I'm wishing you another year of, uh, well, a, a better year of health where you get to be healthy yeah. and happy and not have any, you know, random life shit hit you. So, yeah. That's what I'm wishing for you. Life man. shit is always happening. Yeah, yeah. Stay alive. Don't we die. We are going to be alive. Try not Stay. to die. Not to die. That's what I'm talking about. Be alive. <laughs> Simple shit, right? <laughs> 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 I'm dying right oh, now. You dying right now? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> uh, I hope Kaylin never hopes I don't get sick. <laughs> Short stop. What up? <laughs> uh, um, we got some. We got some questions actually. Yeah, Thanks same. AJ. Okay, so we'll go with Kaylin. Go, yeah, YouTube. My YouTube crowd is away. YouTube. Do they? They yeah. ask questions. Yeah. Fuck Facebook. Oh. Whoa. Hey. whoa, whoa, whoa. Dude, Facebook's over here representing. You yeah. need to calm down. That's my Facebook down. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, Mark's, Mark's, watching. Mark's like, we're <laughs> emails you directly. <laughs> I heard what you said. I heard what you said. <laughs> I randomly selected a YouTube or Facebook thing <laughs> just to watch, and I heard exactly your words. I heard what you said. You're excommunicated. Yeah, dead to me. Uh, okay, so one's just uh, from <clears throat> William Zell, or ex William Zell. Says, uh, how many hours uh, minimum does a person a day, so how, how many hours a day does someone have to study to become a high level artist? And this is a great question because he wrote that uh, I only practice four hours a day. Sure. Sad face. So I already know what you're going to say. Take it away. Oh, no, well, I'm curious. What do you think I'm going to say? That setup. Ooh, nice. What you say? Yeah. Well, I want to assume that you're going to say. What? A day you study. Hello? What, did did so you just go? Did you just cut out? No, I hear him. Oh, start over. Okay. You cut out for me, which <clears throat> means that you cut out for everyone oh. else. Oh. Uh, I want to assume that you're going to say that the amount of hours you can put into it each day doesn't matter as long as whatever that you're putting in, you're putting in 100% effort. Like, you're really kind of studying. You're not just, you know, yeah, half assing that's, that's about, that's pretty close. Pretty close, yeah. No, yeah, you got it. You know me, dude. You know me. <laughs> um. So... Weird. Yeah, so uh, a lot of what Kaylin's saying is pretty true. Like, if you, it's not so much the the time; it's more about the effort for sure. But but there, let, let's be clear: there is like a minimum amount, right? Like, if you only spend like a half an hour every day, um, your chances to improve uh, in a long term are going to be really hard, right? It's, it's going to be very slim. I mean, over a long, long period of time, for sure, maybe you'll improve, but it, it'll just it'll probably take way too long, right? And <clears throat> and so, you know, people ask, like, what's the minimum amount of effort? 
that you can put in because some people work a lot and I get that and some people have different circumstances and I get this you know and so what's the minimum in my opinion about 15 hours a week that's about the minimum that I would imagine someone needs to put in to generally get good at or great at the types of things that they want to get good at obviously if you put a little bit more time into it in a day or in a week like if you go for 20 hours 30 hours or 40 hours a week um, that will also help out a lot but just like there is a, a stamp on too little like if you work like I said very limited amount of time on something a week um, there is just an equal amount of a stamp found on the other side of the spectrum meaning working too much you understand that like and working too much is along the lines of like working 60 70 hours a week on something because you really are now having so much time invested in this thing and you will definitely still improve and pretty dramatically i'm sure but it's detrimental to other things like your health like you start feeling more sick you will stop uh finding quality of life you won't have enough time probably to even exercise or eat right you know because you're just so devoted and some might say that's what it takes you know this is kind of a western thing it's like if you don't spend like 70 hours a week then you're never going to do it uh, and I'm starting to change this opinion because I've I've experienced people who uh, don't spend countless amounts of hours and still find a, a lot of success. And a lot of that has to do is because they just are committed uh, and consistent. Okay? That consistency is something that I think is very, very important. And if you want to go through this life, you know, um, working super, super hard... I highly recommend you take a look back and say, why? Why are you doing it so much? Because for me, this is what happened. And because of that, I uh, was overworking myself, and I ended up finding less and less time hanging out with the people that I cared about. Um, and so now I've switched tides. In the last two years, I've really been focusing on changing this because I was, working, I was one of those people that worked quite a bit. I was working too much that I didn't have time for anything. And this time was flying by, and it, it was detrimental to my my health but if you also think about it like as a muscle like think about like a muscle training a muscle if you're practicing and training yourself every like day on your biceps you're, you're never giving your biceps any moment to rest and i believe the same thing is with like creative and artistic um prowess like if you're constantly practicing and, and training you're never giving your your brain an opportunity to learn or digest the things that you've you've been practicing all throughout the day so why do I say the minimum is like 15 hours? That, that might be surprising because that's right, right about the amount, that's like right around the amount of time that that person probably spends a week, right? Uh, it's because there's, there's some studies that's discovered that if you spend like, yeah, just a, like a good amount of energy and effort a day, which is about three to four hours a day, um, and you keep the, that time focused because sometimes people say that they practice or study for three hours, but, you know, they're on their phones and they're, like, uh, on YouTube or watching videos or, you know, if you're truly focused, and the best way you can do this is test yourself by timing yourself often. Yeah, you'll discover that there's more and more time um, than you anticipated to get these types of things finished and done. Um, and more focused time that allows you to get more things done as well. A lot of my students that take my class that run into this problem, I usually give them some sort of schedule or some sort of tactic with mm -hmm. the schedule that they have, and then they end up uh, usually accelerating their, their growth just from that simple thing alone. And so that's why I usually encourage people just to practice, um, just even just timing themselves, because all that stuff adds up. And so to your answer, what's the minimum? You're good. Just stay a little bit more focused. Don't get so discouraged. Will it take uh, a bit of time for you to reach mastery or amazing skill? Of course. And that would be true even if you were spending 10 hours a day. Okay? So might as well just enjoy your life while you're doing it. And just learn as you go, right? Ooh, who joined in there now? It's John. What's up, John? We can't Ooh. hear us. Oh, God. He's got to unmute. He's like, oh, God. Oh, no. Okay. Hey, by the, by the way, is my oh. mic picking up any feedback? 
Because it looks like it's saying stuff when I'm not. Uh, no, I don't think so. All right, cool. Um, all right, let me read a question from one of my chats. So on Twitch, somebody said, did you ever finish working on that game where you were hand painting every asset with tender loving care? Um, what? <laughs> well, before that, they said, hi, Kaylin. So I don't know who it's addressed oh, to. That's probably to Kaylin then. Oh, it's a Kaylin okay. question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's up, guys? That's, that's, that's... What's up, John? <clears throat> yes, uh, we are still working on it. Uh, John is is doing um, not not John in this one, but Korean and John. He's uh, he's working on some um, some major changes to the engine, so I think he should have an update soon. But uh, I can't really do any artwork quite yet. I'm kind of on hiatus right now because he's doing engine changes, so I can't do any artwork yet if the engine's going to change. So that way, like we don't waste our time. So he's making some big changes, and after that, it's probably going to be a big uh, situation of bottlenecking where I kind of have to start creating a bunch of art for him. So. Uh, waiting for that to start, but we do have every intention of releasing it. Um, it's been a long time, so I can't wait for that to get out. I think it's gonna be really fun to make. So yeah, there that. you go. Cool. All right, I got one. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> let's see. So that was the last question. And who, who are these people? Oh, remember, like, what's their names? Oh yeah, when you read their names. Um, the last question is from Odeli. Wait, Odelia. Thank you, Odelia. Odelia Lee. Yeah. Well, thank you for that question. Yeah, yeah. Odelia Lee. Um, John, do you want to uh, take control of the Facebook chat? Yeah, I can do that. Right. Thank you. Um, so, thank you, guys. I appreciate your support. So this one's probably a quick one, so I'll do, do two of these ones. It says, uh, do you know anyone that has, do you know anyone at Art Center that has illustration? Because I guess he's asking because he only ever sees entertainment design grads working in games. So he wants to know if there's anyone that you know that went to Art Center that, like, you know, that does illustration. Um, not the top of my head, but other other than like probably Ross, <laughs> Ross Chan. Yeah, I think Ross Chan, right? Yeah. Yeah, but he he doesn't necessarily do illustrations. Like he just does his own thing, yeah. which happens to be illustrations. But I'm not sure if it's like. Yeah, I don't think we know on top of my head. Okay. Uh, next next question from David Fortin. Um, at what point hey, did you up? stop painting your own work? And <laughs> most days I'm happy with my work for like an hour, then I hate it. All right. <laughs> so you David. yourself uh that that doesn't happen too often so it's not really a good answer or question for me okay. um not because i think i'm like the best and everything that i do is amazing i just know that i'll just paint another thing the next day so regardless of whether i don't like it or not i'll just keep painting i I'm, i guess i'm just always um like on to the next one you know like it's not really one of those things yeah, that I'm just kind of like, I don't know. Uh, it usually happens more along the lines of like like the when I look into the to the past and I find a piece of work, I'm like, eh, that's not that good, you know? But it's never most it's never that immediate, like day by day. I think when I first started out, I was probably like that. But that's because I wasn't very good at all. And I would constantly recognize how lackluster my work was uh, often. So I can see that. But even then, I, I knew that I was, it was all temporary. I was just working towards uh, like that greatness eventually. I just kept on working. I was like, this is all temporary. This is all temporary. And perhaps that mindset just kind of lived with me. It's just embedded in my, my mindset. And I just said, meh. You know, I'll just that. keep painting. What were you going to say, Kevin? I don't know. So I'd say, so you would say that it's because uh, you don't get too down on yourself because you're not ever stopping. You're just like, it's temporary. So yeah. I'm not doing the painting. So it's more, emotionally invested. yeah, it's more uh, obvious to me later, like much later whether what I did was any good or not. Uh, and, uh, you know, the other side of the coin is shown too, where I'm like, I look back at work and I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. Like, why don't I do that stuff anymore? You know, that happens to me more actually more often than, because because I'm always changing kind of what I'm doing. And then when I look back and I'm like, yeah, why am I not doing that kind of stuff anymore? I'm like, that was pretty fun, you know? And I just end up just doing it. I'm like, yeah, I'll just do it. All right. Good answer, good answer. So I think the overall thing is, yeah, just keep creating new art, and then eventually you'll kind of move out of that stage, you know? It's yeah, like, how, do, how do you feel painting, about yeah. that, Kalen? Like, do you have an answer? <clears throat> well, I think I think you kind of hit on the head. It's like, um, yeah, you can hate your work, but, you know, how long are you going to hate it for? So it's like, if you only do one painting ever, and then you hate it, and it's like, yeah, you're going to hate it. But um, you should know that, you know, most concept art is an iterative process. So you're going to be doing a lot of pieces. So if you don't get it right the first time, you know, 
you got to do some more paintings. I mean, how many paintings do you do in a year? I mean, you're going to get better at it over time. So if you don't like your work now, it's just, you know, that's just the state that you're in. But luckily, it's not just a one and done deal. You get to do more paintings. So um, kind of kind of enjoy the process of, you know, getting better. Uh, something that I read, like something that a shirt that I had when I went to martial arts the other day, someone had a shirt that said a black belt is a white belt that will never quit, you know. That's, well, that's kind cool. Of, you know, that's pretty that's tight. A, that's a really great saying. Um, Next yeah, time you see him, just shoot him and just like yeah, psh, take a shirt. I'm like, you suck <laughs> <at> the art. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's very true, right? A white belt, a, a white belt who never quit. So yeah. just know that where that's you are right saying. now in terms of your 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 art your art journey, you know, everyone has to start there. So you're not going to start off amazing if you don't like your work. So just just enjoy the process. You know? That's a great. Well, where, where they got the idea of <clears throat> different color belts is. Because it was always a white belt from the beginning, but it just keeps getting dirtier and dirty. Oh, that's a cool <laughs> idea. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's even cooler. So it is a oh, true story. So it's actually, yeah, it's just time is what made it dark. I'll take both of those. I'm going to pretend that I am the only one that came up with these. No one else. <laughs> John over here <laughs> dropping knowledge. No, I'm going to be oh. like... There's a saying that I always say to my students. <laughs> <laughs> no so one, no one, one else. Your shit? Yeah, my dad hurts it's karate all. class. It's like every everything, so- every everything I've ever learned from you is stolen from someone else. There, there's actually some truth to that. It's oh, like, not like the literally no, I, stolen. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Like it's a collective of <laughs> things you learned. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of a lot yeah. of the things I got was from like mentors, myself, and people mm-hmm. I've met who are really great people. Um, like for instance, one of my favorite things I tell my students that I just don't remember the person who told me this, but it was at a Blizzard mixer, and he's like, "If you want." you know, your work to succeed, you just got to inspire whole teams of people. And I was like, wow, that's powerful. And I'll forget your name as soon as I walk out of this building. <laughs> but I will always, <laughs> but I would always say this to <laughs> many more people as I live my life. No, I didn't, obviously I didn't say that or think right, that. Right. I just never, uh, I didn't it's imagine. Knowledge, though. Yeah. And I'm like, man, that's how you want super to be, powerful. You don't want to be like, you just made up in your head, like from nothing. Usually information from people your mentors it's just a yeah it's just a product of experience and <laughs> meeting lots of people so but I'm, but that specific phrase the martial arts stuff i am going to steal and i'm going to <laughs> i'm just letting you know right now <laughs> how long are you getting a stream major how much longer uh probably for another uh 20 minutes or so uh yeah, john why don't, you, why don't you get a question from uh your, from the so i think we've done a twitch one and uh YouTube one. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, what you have you to? have you had any questions answered yet from Facebook? Yeah, I think uh, one. No, yeah, no, I don't oh. think so. Oh, what? Yeah, you okay, just go to Facebook. To All yeah. right. First one says, "Any tips on moving to the West Coast?" Ooh, maybe John can give you some advice. Enoch. Oh, yeah, I'm trying trying to help people out. Just, um, I mean, you know, I have a couple artists that are uh, living in the house uh, that I found and. It's re- relatively easily e- easy, easy, relatively easily, easily able to move. I was gonna say that. <laughs> I don't know. It's um, it's just a matter of like you know collecting a bunch of artists and people that you can trust and stuff, and then get them all together and it can be a lot cheaper. Um, if they all split split the rent and stuff. But um, trust and being just hit me hit me up, Enoch. I can help you out. DM Junksters. Cool. Next question. A lot of happy birthdays on Facebook. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, a lot of happy birthdays. Someone said, would you look at my stuff? Sent a link. Uh, not yeah. at this moment, since I'm painting, and I want to answer questions. Um, if you could just hold on to that link, I'll check it out some other time yeah. and send you a text. We, we may start cool. streaming again and start doing that like Friday situation. Yeah, we can yeah. make a day where it's just like a... Or, yeah. uh, Which, Michael, that should come event. back in the summer, actually. I should have more time open in the summer, so we could start coming back to the Feedback Friday stuff. So. Yeah, hit, uh, DM me about that. We'll talk about it. Ooh, yeah, in the DMs. Nice. All right. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> send news, send news, Mike. What do you think is more important? <laughs> perfecting at first when you're starting out? Uh, perfecting at first? What you, what you got to be more specific, my friend. That's whoever awesome. that, yeah, whoever asked that question, be a little more specific. Next question. I don't, want, I don't, I don't want to assume what I think the question was leading to, but um, just, just try to phrase it a little bit more specifically. And if not, I'll try to take a stab at what you were trying to go for in that question. Do y'all work with a lot of women? I feel like 
from what I see, the concept art world is a boys' club. So yeah, speak. and that's actually not too far off. And it's not to say that um, it's not to say that women can't be artists. That's obviously not true. And it's not that uh, women are that are in the industry are bad artists or can't get hired. Um, get less noticed. It's it's none of that actually. It's just a, a it's a product of. And it's changing already dramatically, and this is not just the the case in um, in our yeah. field. It's just overall uh, because women have, you know, historically been kind of oppressed in the kind of opportunities that they were were available to them, right? Thanks. Yeah, and I think just recently, and I mean recently in the terms of decades, like the last few decades, right? Um, this is clearly starting to become less and less popular. This idea of oppressing women. And for a lot of obvious reasons. And and so that like what you're just experiencing now is just kind of like the the results of like previous type of um stuff that might have happened, right? And I don't think the game industry specifically was not like we can't hire women, man. Women don't know how to make video games. Now I don't think that's true either. Uh if anything, I think it goes on the other side of the spectrum of potential sexism where men want to hire women because of these nerdy <laughs> game companies because they want to populate their company yeah. with ladies, right? It's but, like, yeah, and, and I again, I think that ideal is also going out the window. I think people are, women are generally are getting hired more and more and more. And I think it's because, you know, women that were born, like in my, like, decade, like my uh, era, uh, know that they can have more opportunities. Know that they can work in games. That games aren't just for boys. And like for instance, my daughter will probably be, well, when she grows up and she's like as old as I am, she'll work in whatever industry, potentially game art or video games or film. Like definitely some sort of art because she loves it. And she, like today she just did a drawing, and it's like a drawing of me three quarter, and it was like actually pretty oh, good. Nice. Because most kids either draw perfectly straight ahead or yeah. side. She drew like a three quarter of me and like my hat with like, there was like some slight perspective. And I was That's like, cool. what in the world did you just? And my point is, is that she will grow up knowing that she can be a concept artist, that that's not a boy's job, if that makes sense. And I think most mm -hmm. kids, like our kids and our friends' kids and kids that are like now even like 10 or 12 years old, they're all going to grow up, whether they're boy or girl or transgendered or whatever, they, what makes them stand out. Um, all that stuff's going to start to be nullified, right? People are going to obviously not pay attention to that as much anymore. It's just we're still living in that kind of society, right? Like there's still people that think that way. There's still people that are kind of like obviously ignorant to these ideas. And a lot of them are just super old people. Not all of them, obviously. But um, yeah. like people like Donald Trump, who's just like a 73-year-old man with dementia running a country, <laughs> the free world, and just living ass-backwards ideals, you know? Um, yeah. yeah, we need less of those people. But then, like I said, not all, right? Because then you have someone like Bernie Sanders who does not think that way at all. He's also he's like equally as old as I think he's like two years older than Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. um, companies, are, companies are definitely getting better just because companies are seeing the value of diverse workers in their studios. You know? Yeah, it's like I don't think yes, I don't think studios now, and I'm not saying I can't speak for all, but I would I I would go on the assumption that the majority of game studios are inclusive, right? They're not none of them are mm -hmm. like l like deliberately not trying to hire women. I think it's yeah. just that there's there's just more boys, right, that happen to grow up in a society that encouraged this type of behavior. And I'm saying that's changing with every decade. And so when I my daughter actually... when my daughter grows up, like I said, she will grow up knowing that um that this is not a boys' club only, right? And my my son will also not look at jobs that are m like known as girl club, like if, for instance, like makeup design or something like that, right? He will also grow up thinking that's not a girls' only club. You know what I mean? Like he can do whatever he wants, and it's crazy. It's like so it's still hardwired in like our TV and our advertisements, like because uh, Julian, uh, my son, thinks that blue is only for boys, and then my daughter thinks pink is only for girls. And I'm trying to educate them that it's not the case. That Julian can wear pink and Delilah can wear blue. Uh, Delilah can buy um, cars and Julian can buy dolls, right? 
and all that stuff is fine. Like, but you know, if they if he generally likes blue and she generally likes pink, you know, that's that's fine. But I don't want them to think that they have to like it because it matches their gender. You know what I mean? And I think people like me, if, like parents like me, and many other people, even in general, mm. have these ideals. And so when this next generation of kids that grow up will grow up thinking, yeah, like why did you guys ever think? That girls can make awesome games. <laughs> it's like I, I didn't think that, and I think most of the game industry did didn't think that either. <laughs> but you're right because when I worked at Sony, um, Santa Monica, we had plenty of like women employees, but we had much more male employees. It just was the, a fact. And it, again, it wasn't like we didn't think any differently about them. It was just this is how it was. And we even had to turn a, a, a one of the women's bathroom into a men's bathroom. Because there was, there was this, the bathrooms was always being full, right? Uh, and that was just a thing. But it wasn't like every day we would get like notifications like, hey, I make sure to go and tell Stacy that she's not capable of her job. Just make sure she knows her place. You know, it was never like that. Like, it, it, it was never like we, like it wasn't that we weren't trying to actively look to hire people either, but it wasn't like we were avoiding it. It was just whenever we get applications specifically for concept artists, it was just mostly males. And and it, even if it wasn't mostly males, even if it was mostly women and one male, uh, we wouldn't have just hired one of the women just because, well, we should just hire one woman. We just hired people of their qualifications. And that's how it should be, right? If you're a good artist, that's why you should get hired. You shouldn't get hired because of your uh, certain gender or race or whatever affiliation. It's are you qualified, right? Yeah. Are you good? And are you a decent person? Because you could totally be uh, an amazing person or an amazing artist, but not a decent person. Yeah. Yep. And I think I most studios run that way. Artist doesn't have a job. Like if you're a badass girl artist, I get to see one that's really badass. Oh, yeah. Doesn't... Like Carla Ortiz. Like she kicks ass. She's yeah. like she's worked on big films <laughs> and stuff that I haven't even done. Right. Like. Like yeah, she's a much, like, yeah. She's she's thing. working on some big ass projects that are. Because she's a girl. It's because she's just badass. Because she's a badass artist. Carla's like, yeah. if you look at her paintings, she paints really fucking good. So uh, look, let your work speak for yourself. Don't worry about the gender, your race. You yeah, know. my advice to 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 female artists too is to show your work first, right? Because you you want to go on the impression of you're a great artist, not because you happen to have boobs. Right, because that yeah. there, there's still guys that are like that, right? And so they if you want to hire me for my diversity, you yes, diversity in your office. They hire me and Michael because they're black. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, <John>. you know, <laughs> yeah, not not to put Cecil on on the on the spot, but I think he might have hired me because I was a little bit Korean in me. Oh, there you go. It is. I can cover <laughs> it. Come on in. Cecil's probably like, yeah, this is a little bit right. Um, so that guy that uh, had that question. Uh, was more specific. Okay, thanks. Oh, oh, Wait, hold on, hold on. Can I can I add? Nope. Quick? I wanted to I wanted to tack on to the last comment. Nope, we don't appreciate a younger artist coming in. Nope, we don't appreciate your kind. I have value, AJ. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have ideas. No nope, okay. ideas or. <laughs> Let me flourish, master. All right, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to mention that in my experience, going to college for arts and trying to get into the entertainment arts. Uh, the classes that I was in was majority female. So See, it was like four guys in the class and then like 20. It's already 20. happening. So the the next generation coming in, I think, will be full of many, many, many more female artists that are going to be kicked out there. And people of all races and color. It's, yeah, that's, that's, exactly. that's the thing, you know. Saturation, what makes See, me frustrated. Value. Boom. Yeah, what's your huge saturation? Oh, yeah, value. What's your value? My What's your no? What's your HSP? <laughs> yeah, what's your HSP? What's your <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's just you know, and that's why I was infuriated with the kinds of stuff that our current president and even I'm starting to discover other uh, leaders in different countries, their ideals and how they're kind of controlling media and um, spinning this crazy, terrible agenda that's uh, ass backwards. But historically speaking, uh, diversity has always been. A great tool of uh, advancement of, of a civilization. This is why America at one point was kicking some ass, serious ass, because we were so diverse. Um, yeah. And we, we can still 
do that, but it's just like we got to get rid of one of the people who are running the show right now who doesn't believe that, <laughs> okay? But historically speaking, like even the most terrible of terrible people, uh, Genghis Khan, who murdered people just so easily, right? Um, just to give you a scope of like how he was, he he would tell people, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to your I'm gonna go to your country, and you're gonna give up. And if you don't give up, I'm gonna burn down your city and kill every single person that ever lived there." Like that's that's your options, and people are like, "Uh, we're not gonna give up our <laughs> we're not gonna give up our country. Are you kidding me? Or our city?" And he's like, "All right," and he rolls in. Literally kills every single person, burns down their buildings, kills women and children, kills their livestock, um, and then he would keep like a good amount of men to stay there for two weeks, just hide, and then check in every day to see if people came back from like vacation, right, or like left town for a day or two, and then they come back and they're like, "What in the what happened? Where's my city?" And then these riders will come up and just decapitate you. They'd be like, "Bitch." <laughs> You should have surrendered. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, what? I didn't have anything to do with ah. Uh, I mean, they would have these people line up in a line and they would just execute them if they were a certain height. You know, tremendously <laughs> murderous group of uh, people. It's but PC, bro. Yeah, but they were highly inclusive. Like, if people did surrender, they were like, all right, great. Come on in. Like, and they, if they, even if they had different ideologies and like different technologies or philosophy or societal beliefs, they were actually pretty cool. And in fact, they they encouraged more of that because they'd recognize the power of learning what others know that you might not know. Genghis Khan knew that. In fact, that's what made him build the Khan Dynasty was because he was able to get all the step people who constantly got like butt heads, right? Constantly that were butting heads. He said, "Hey, you know, we're pretty fearsome. If we just got together." Like if we just like work together, I bet we can do a lot. And then they were they sure sure did. And there's a really great story of where um, Genghis Khan sent like like one of the generals from one of the countries that they were invading shot him in the arrow uh, in in the leg. And Genghis Khan was like, "Bring me that man." And everyone's like, "Oh, he's gonna get it. He's gonna kill that guy so good, you know." And he brings that guy, and it's like the general of a dif- different army. And he's like, "Do you want to be the general of my army? Because no one's ever hit me before." And he's like, uh, do I have any other options? He's like, no. Nah. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, sure, I'll join you. And then he, that guy ended up becoming one of the greatest generals for Genghis Khan. And, um, and what ended up happening, he t- sent that general to go invade the West. He's like, what's going on over at the West? We've never gone that far. And that's like where the Knights and Europe was basically going on, right? And he's like, go over there, check it out. Just recon. Send like you know, 15, 20,000 men. Just go check it out. Tell me what you find. Right? That's all they were going on. It was like a recon mission. And they came in and they were just pillaging and murdering all these Europeans. And in fact, if you go like like Europeans said that there was this deep, dark threat that was coming from the east. That they had no idea where they came from. They were basically devils on horses and stuff like that. And um, the only way that they were able to hold them back was that the, these European nations and counties and countries, again, unified to a greater evil, like they also were like constantly bickering with one another. So when they were able to unify, they were able to hold off this recon army, just a recon army. But uh, that general knew that people are easily divided. And so what they did is they sent spies in and constantly saying, you know, you know, like this alliance, after this alliance is done, they're like, since they're here, they're going to take over some of your land. And they're like, really? And they're like, yeah. He's like, well, fuck that. I'm out of here. And once they did that, and these people started separating again. Guess what? The this Khan Recon army came in and just started killing them as they were going back to their homes. And my point is, Brutal. like, like this is historic. Like throughout time, you know, in the Roman Empire, when they decided to unify and, and accept people's different religions, great things happened. You know, um, just all throughout history, uh, mm-hmm. including our own American history, right? And uh, so, like. Historically speaking, you know, we are going to live in a more inclusive and more uh, diverse world communities now more than ever because we have access to information like we never had before, <laughs> right? And so more and more people are starting to realize, like, yeah, these people that are running the show are kind of fucking backwards with their policies and their agendas, you know? 
and more and more people are doing that. And when the world finally unites as as a as a world, not as a country or different nations, but as a world, we're like, hey, we should actually all get along, and we should stop bombing each other and trying to kill each other for stupid stuff that aren't is not going to matter in the long run, like fighting over territory and over fossil fuels. That's when we'll go to Mars. Yeah, that, many... That's when we're going to travel into space and be a space-traveling species. It's going to be amazing. That was a long rant that went into Marco Polo. That's great. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then watch Marco Polo. The... <laughs> it's all, this whole stream is just an advertisement to watch yeah, Marco Polo. Sure. <laughs> what, what was the follow-up question, John? A lot of questions from our things. If you want a lightning round, let me know why. Well, oh, yeah, there there was, right. yeah, there was one, the guy, the specific yeah, question, right? Better. What was that specific question? And then we'll do lightning. Yeah, should, uh, should um, he just was wondering, like, what's the best thing to start off with, like anatomy, uh, you know, all that stuff. I see. Um, so the answer to that question is whatever your weaknesses are now. Because it's like if I tell you to work on anatomy, uh, but you have a real hard time just with draftsmanship, it's going to be even harder, right? And so, but if you have good anatomy, or I'm sorry, you've bad, uh, if you have good anatomy and bad marksmanship, it's going to be kind of distracting. But if you have good marksmanship, but bad anatomy, and I tell you to work on your, um, not marksmanship, uh, draftsmanship, like if you work on your ability to paint well, um, that might also be, you know, sending you into the wrong direction. And so I generally tell people just paint something in a short amount of time and then write down all the things that you felt were wrong and then pick the top two or three and just start working on that and just keep doing that continuously and constantly. Um, and I'll tell you one good analogy and then we'll just do a, a lightning round, yeah? Easy. And so this, this analogy goes off of this idea that there was, uh, there was an egg and then now there's a chicken. You know what I mean? Like... Like, the egg cracks, hatches open, and now there's a chicken being laid, right? And so people are always, like, asking, like, that question kind of allures to this idea of, like, when when is that chicken hatching moment? Like, when do you, what should you do to get to that moment? And the way you should really think about this is that it's not so much that the chicken hatched from the egg, and I actually got this from a book, it's from good to great. It's more along the lines is that once the embryo was seeded, and then the embryo grows into, you know, the egg, which takes time. And then the egg, inside the egg, you know, the, the chicken starts to grow its beak. It grows its wings. It grows its uh, feathers. It grows its feet and bones and heart and brain and et cetera, et cetera. And then it keeps growing and growing and then eventually hatches out of the egg. And then it goes into uh, uh, living in the world, breathing, and then starts to grow and eat and grow and eat and grow and then starts to molts and then grow more feathers and different types of feathers and eventually becomes a chicken and then it goes loop loop around over and over makes new babies and etc cetera, etc cetera. but see my point is is that if you think of it that way the the hatching of the egg was just one part of the whole experience of becoming a chicken right and that's kind of the same thing i'm trying to get to you is like there is no moment or there's no thing that you should focus on specifically right now um that I can tell you that would work immediately for you. You get what I'm saying? Like you have to understand that there's all kinds of things uh, that you should be working on and there's never going to be like a aha moment. Like I just studied my anatomy and now I'm the best artist that I've ever been. No, there's a lot more, right? And and I know people who have focused only in on anatomy and co- like just only anatomy is like the thing. And if you were to ask them to concept something, they would have a very hard time, Right. And it's not because they're bad artists. It's not because they don't have ideas. It's just that's not what they practiced. So you got to just stay focused on the types of things that you want to practice. You understand? And the kinds of things that you can immediately see what's wrong with your work and just keep doing that. And then one day you'll just become a badass. This is how it works. Um, keep an eye on the bigger picture. Yeah. And so like right now, I would say just do it quick test of yourself and paint something and then just uh, quantify what it is that you can improve upon and then just start improving upon that stuff. It's, it's less about what you should focus on. It's more about just getting started in, in the regards to the context of your question. Hope that helps. Okay. Lightning round is amazing right now. You know, Jamaro is streaming right now. Wait, what'd you say? What'd What'd you say? Technology is amazing. Jamaro is streaming, is streaming right now doing some epic shit. 
nice. they're streaming right now. And then I scrolled up, and apparently CTN is doing like a life drawing session, and then you can nice. like, tune in and life draw with them. Oh, dude, That's access cool. to art is just like, dude, amazing right now. Technology's fucking <laughs> art <bad>. education. <laughs> I yeah, was like, after this, cool. I could probably go left draw right now from the comfort of my own home. Just look at the screen and look at the lady. That's the Can you link screen. me that life drawing thing? Yeah, yeah, you should just link it. Oh. oh. <laughs> uh, it's no, it's, 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 people, it's uh, people like Kaylin that keeps us from progressing. It's Kaylin. I know. <laughs> it's Kaylin's the reason <laughs> why there's not a lot bro. of female. Look out for myself. Look out for myself. Kaylin's the specific uh, reason why there's not a lot of female artists. Find it. Uh, the so chats that... are asking for the link. Okay, hold on, hold on. Yeah, we'll do this lightning round. Everybody go to there. I'll link it out. Okay. Yeah, just do it in Discord, in the okay. general chat. Okay, lightning round. Um, I'll pull one from Twitch, and then we'll go to YouTube. Okay. Uh, let's see. For social media growth, do you recommend only posting polished work or almost done artwork or maybe progress photos? And is your mentorship full? Um, I, I just opened up my next classes, so I can answer that. It's not. It just opened up my ones that are not for this upcoming month with the one after because that one did fill up um and in terms of social media just post often and consistently the good work will just come naturally um but yeah try to post post stuff that you you feel is good um but it's really just about consistency <clears throat> lightning round i can't get too deep into it lightning round okay um let me let me get one um, okay, uh, sometimes, here's a question, sometimes you know your what's the best way to tackle a mistake? It's a pretty easy question. Wait, say it say one more time, you cut out for me. What's, what's the best way to tackle a mistake? So let's, let's say you're doing a drawing, mm -hmm. and then you, you, you know your mistakes, you man a drawing, what's the best way to tackle a mistake? I guess maybe during or after the drawing. Um, usually I just go online and start studying, try to get answers to the problem that I am currently dealing with. Word. Good answer. Lightning round. Uh, all right, Michael, go. Your turn. Oh, Facebook. Or John. 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 How do I transition my art How do I... more, more game-like I... style-wise? <clears throat> um, I should focus on. Uh, best way to answer this question, just pick a game that you wanted to, to assimilate your work to and start doing it towards that direction. A game that you like. There's more su nuances to that question to answer, but lightning round. All right. Um, and I can't link that on YouTube. It's too long for the comment. All right. We'll just so I don't them. know how we're, we're going to get to this. Just tell people, just, um, just tell them to go to the Twitch and then just. The link says there. deleted on Twitch. Somebody commented. Ooh. Oh, this is difficult. Just tell them. Uh, follow CTN on Facebook. They'll, they'll see it. They just follow up CTN. Go to follow, okay, they could hear you. So. Yeah, just follow Creative Talent Network on Facebook, Creative Talent Network, and then you'll see that they're live right now, doing live drama. Just go to go to their Facebook page. Yeah. Sick. Okay. Sick. Okay, ask a question, Michael. All right. Um, <clears throat> question to AJ: How do you stop overthinking so much that it prevents you from taking risks while making art? And how come you you're working in this baby's room right now? So the baby's room is my, it's, it's my bedroom. I work for my bedroom and we're about to have a baby. So baby's going to be in here. And in June, you'll have the baby joining on these streams. So just get used to it. Get used to it. What, what, wait, what was the other question? Or what was the other part uh, of the question? How do you stop overthinking? Overthinking. Pretty much. Um, um, one of the tactics is just timing yourself. Just time yourself. And you'll start to catch yourself overthinking very often. Okay. Um, again, I, I can't get too much into it. I'm trying to finish this out so I can get going. Okay. Uh, actually, on my side is uh, how should one X? How robots? should I? Form sketching. How should one start learning how to draw? <laughs> it's easy. Easy question. Wait, say it again. I'm sorry. John was interrupted how, by how laughing. Do start drawing mechs. Like, how do you start drawing mechs? Oh, drawing lots of mechs. Go. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I do. I just drew. I just drew and studied a lot of robots and mechanical design. Often, <laughs> very, very often. Next one say is happy birthday. Who would win in Thank a you. fight between you now versus you ten years ago? Uh, I think now, because I would know all my. Well, not even that. I just know all my weaknesses. 
Uh, I guess that would make sense, huh? Yeah, I'll get in my head first. I'll say some <laughs> real shit. <laughs> you get real serious. I don't know. Barca, with, 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 like, the oh, yeah, he's thought about this before. I don't want to mess with uh, I'll say uh, some real stuff, too. Just, yeah, it's just Barca, watch the season. Season two of uh, Rick and Morty. Uh, season two or season three? Season two, the first episode. I haven't gotten into uh, season two yet. It was really uh, good. Yeah, it's a good show. Should be so funny. Okay. Um, I got one. It says, hey, AJ, I'm currently in school right now. I still got two plus years Quit. to go. <laughs> but I'm thinking of quitting school <laughs> uh, quit, and build quit. <laughs> <laughs> and build my portfolio until this year, uh, until this year by myself and start applying for jobs. Any thoughts and suggestions on that? One? Yeah, I, I quit school, but I didn't quit, quit. Um, malicely. I had like some freelance work that I was doing, and then uh, shortly after, I started working in the studio with Kalen. Um, but yeah, I did like freelance. I was living off of freelance for a while, and so. Um, if you can afford it, then go by all means focus on your portfolio instead. The thing that you can get out of school, uh, other than the immense amount of debt, is uh, community. Just hang out with the people there. And if you don't like anyone there and no one likes you, it's just, just have bad luck with even the school you went to in terms of community. Um, yeah, just go online and just start working on your own stuff. That's not bad strategies. Um, but there are great schools out there uh, worth going to. Brainstorm is one of them if you can afford it. Um, and I don't mean just afford the cost. It's actually reasonably cost according, in comparison to like actual schools out there, right? But it's um, yeah, it's ex it's expensive to live out there. But like John was saying earlier, he has alternatives for a lot of you guys to be able to do that. And so for me, it's more about um, oh, it's lightning rough. We need to get back to the finishing. So to me, it's 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 just. You know, focus on your portfolio is a big point, whether you stay or leave. So keep that in mind. So you're, you're right. Your suspicions are right to focus on your portfolio. But just know that it will take some time. Everything takes time. Cool. All right. Uh, I got one from Andre. Hey, Anthony. Do you What's up, man? Focus studying one thing at a time until you master it, like perspective, or mix a couple of different fundamental subjects along the week? I, I just study things that are relevant to me at the time but it doesn't necessarily mean I go to mastery I just do it until I have answers that are suitable to what I was looking for cool alright John you got a question yeah next one says Anthony how many references reference images is too many or too little I have a project in mind with 500 plus images that I have collected towards towards it kind of overwhelming me at the moment at the same time I complete completed a piece with just three images <laughs> Well, it seems like you answered your own question. If it overwhelms you and you're not doing anything, then stop doing it. And if you don't need as much, then don't use as much. I, I generally say you should gather lots and lots of reference, but study a few. You know, So you have reference readily available for you. But yeah, stay focused on the ones that are most useful to you at that moment. So yeah, I, I hear you, your complaint. Brendan Bang Chang, what's up, man? Oh. Michael, you're up next. Yep. Question, how do you balance studies on fundamentals and personal projects? I mean, in a time management way. You should just make your studies just generally the, the highest priority almost always. I tell my students that, like, if you don't study, um, then you're not learning anything new uh, or as often as you would like. So. Okay. Uh, question, what's more important, having a killer... Right. At art and having good relationships with the employer or having mediocre art should there be a balance so they're saying should be good at art or have good or have good like networking skills it's probably the, probably kind of the question they're asking yeah you should just yeah. have both yeah obviously like you're either or uh, if you had to choose one i would say um cool. no if you had to choose one which is more important being friendly to the people or uh having good artwork i say be friendly to people because uh, the good artwork will just come eventually. But oh, okay. being a jerk off might be hard to get rid of if you're already a jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Fair enough. But yeah, yeah, because I know lots of people who paint really well who aren't very kind. To clarify, I said have a good portfolio. I assume that you're already. 
<laughs> if you're not a nice person, work on that shit. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I I can uh, fairly say that a lot of my success comes from who I am, like the kind of person I am when I reach out to people and talk to people, um, more so than my art. True facts. Uh, who's up next, Michael or John? I uh, I cut off Twitch. No more questions. Okay. Yeah. okay. John? There's only like two more questions here. Okay. So. All right. I, last. I'm last. On Facebook. Facebook is lit. Facebook is I'm on YouTube. Facebook. YouTube is crazy right now. You mean YouTube? Yeah. YouTube is, <laughs> YouTube is legit. They they always be asking those questions, man. I, and it automatically uploads, right? Yeah. It's nice. 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 I'm nice. my YouTube squad right now. Holding it down. Okay. Right, so well, cut it off right now. And then we'll tell the tell right in the chat, Kalen, like cut off is here. Yeah, so that, I already I already rubber cut it off. So, okay. Yeah. Go ahead, John. Answer your ask your two. And then we'll move to Kalen. I want to drop out of art school because I feel like I can learn better on my own now, and the curriculum is uninspiring. But my okay. family just thinks I'm giving up. I don't feel like it's worth the debt, and I've been gathering a bunch of art resources so I can learn outside of college. Any advice or encouraging words? Um, in terms of people dealing with their parents, I'll give you some real quick advice and then we'll move on. And in terms of dropping out, um, I, I don't highly encourage people to just to drop out for the sake of dropping out and being a rebel. I encourage people to leave when, if they genuinely can see the circumstances aren't working out for them and they have an alternative. Um, and in terms of talking to your parents about it, what I give my advice to is to teach your parents what it is to become a concept artist, what it is and how well um you can succeed in how um it's a real job that has a real career path and has a real real income uh, built into it and if you could do that yeah uh you, you'll be shocked in their the reaction they might be more sympathetic your parents or people who care for you are not genuinely trying to demotivate you to not do the things you want to do they just want to make sure that you succeed and are happy with that success you know and so you just got to demonstrate to them uh, what that means on the real, uh, but like I said, um, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, like I said, you know, just focus in on educating the people you care about that care about you, and then hopefully they'll start understanding everything you do and prove it to them. Prove them. Prove it that you are working at your craft. I was going to add that. Yeah. Yeah, because if you are generally not doing anything, then they're, you know you're not helping <laughs> your cause. <laughs> I convinced my parents uh, to drop out. The only thing that stopped me was the college tried to charge me nine thousand to leave. Dang. So. Wow. Yeah. Uh, all right, John. Any last one? That yeah, one right? more. He said. Uh, He's got one yeah. more, right? Good luck. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. How can one break into the freelance industry? Uh, just post your work as many places as possible. Go to events. Talk to as many people as possible, and uh, generally just have good work. There you go. Yeah. That's all the questions. There. Cool. Okay. All right. That's just YouTube time. Let's do this. Um, let's see. I got a question from Remkin. How much did you focus on emulating traditional media when you were still finding your style in digital paintings? Uh, a lot. A lot of my influences yeah. are mostly traditional. Phil Hill, what's up? Yeah, but not just that. Like you know, old yeah. school people like Landecker, Rockwell, Sargent, Cavaggio, Johan, George, Viper, Georges. So many yeah. people. Got those for days. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next question. In your work, lighting seems to wrap around the character that feels pop. Making the shading feels fine. It just feels to be. Wait. I guess, he, I guess he's probably asking how you can put that in his work. I guess that's what he's saying. Practice your forms and your anatomies. Practice the forms. Okay. Um, yeah. Basic shapes, you know. Uh, Basic forms. forms. Not yeah. shapes. Yeah. Forms. Yeah, uh, correcting Kaylin. Uh, at what age did you feel comfortable <laughs> discussing sex, LGBT culture, gender as a social construct to your kids? Wow, that's a different question. Whenever they start asking yeah. questions about it, right. just answer it truthfully. Oh, all right. Next question. There's no uh, reason to dance around it and make it weird. Yeah. <laughs> just tell them, like, that's how people are. <laughs> I think my daughter asked me, like, she was just like, um, she asked me to think, she's like, like, boys can't wear skirts. And I was like, what? And I found a bunch of pictures. And I showed her, I was like, nah, these boys are wearing skirts. And she's like, what? Did you grab one of Kanye West? No, but I also found images of, like, <laughs> uh, kilts. And I yeah, showed her yeah. that. And I was like, these are, like, uh, epic skirts. I was like, and you can wear this, too, if you want. 
<laughs> oh, good answer. Um, David Farley wrote, uh, I think I'm stuck with art, art career. I want to become a concept artist, but now I'm afraid of all the great artists. I'm, I'm a, but now I'm afraid of all the great artists out there. What can I do? Help me, please. Um, uh, there's nothing to help. This is how it is, always, forever. It's always going to be true in every industry. There's always going to be people better than you. Um, and there's always going to be people who deserve really good. And there's always going to be competition. And it's always going to be scaled at a large capacity. Um, always. And so you have to make yourself... I'm sorry, what? But luckily, most of those good artists are nice people. And they're willing to help yeah. you. If you them the yeah. And so focus in on stuff like just painting and practicing <coughs> often and just making yourself stand out somehow. Cute. Uh, question is, I want to know how much detail... So I guess this person says, whenever I'm drawing, I feel like I'm detailed. How do I know where to detail or where not to detail? Uh, keep your detail mostly on the focal points. That's probably the fastest answer I can give you. Yep. Good answer. Um, oh, that's a good question. Matthias wrote, do you have a Pinterest or something? Um, Wait, say that again. You keep cutting out. Uh, do you have like a Pinterest or something where you keep references or where do you reference? You yes. Know? Pinterest roll a pencil. <clears throat> Okay, cool. So yeah, so follow Pinterest Robot Pencil to see what he's looking at. Um, then he asks how to start with fantasy drawings. Uh, that's a weird question, uh, or kind of a broad question. How to start with fantasy drawings? More specific, yeah. What do you mean? Just like how to start a fantasy? <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah. Draw from your imagination? I don't know. Thumbnails. Research. Thumbnails, research. Good yeah, job. Research. Good job, John. You <laughs> learned. A sword. Whoa. Two... Never mind. Never mind. Somebody's <laughs> asking about a Discord link. Can I drop one in the chats? Yeah, make yeah. one for uh, 24, 24 hours. hours. Yeah. And yep. Everybody okay. in here, um, you guys can join the Discords. I'm on it. Okay. I have two more questions. Join then. our communities. Says, uh, what do you do when creativity interferes with technical skill? That's a, that's a hard one. Wait, what? What do you do when creativity interferes with technical skill? So I imagine it's imagine what happens when you have like technical restraints, like when you're working for a game, and they're like, "Oh, you can't have any chains because you can't animate that." Wait, no, you know, no that's not how it sounded. Though he said, "What if creativity?" Say it again, because uh, it seems like the other way. When, what do you do when creativity? Oh, I guess you're right. Sorry, it's the other way. What do you do when creativity interferes with technical skill? Usually, it's the other way around, but. Um, yeah, so let's let's play that because I'm still trying to wrap around what the situation might be, so I can answer. Okay. Here, how about that? A uh, person that wrote that, try to be more specific and give an, go to the give an example. Yeah, that'd be give helpful. Me, give me an example. Because yeah. right now I can think of the technical thing, like oh, you know, like my technical skill. <clears throat> I have like this great ideas, but I can't technically do that. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a that's a but that's like a mind. but like I have the technical skills. But my creativity is preventing my technical skills from doing. <laughs> no, well, I'm sure there's an example, I, I, or maybe that person just just wrote it. Yeah, maybe. All right. Well, hopefully, it'll come back to us. Okay. Anyways, yeah. next question. Uh, any tips on choosing value light in shadow areas? Should there be a relationship within a local value in shadow versus light, yes. such as halfway to black rule? Yeah, it seems like that person has a a good idea of what to do. Like. It's it's all optical illusions, really. Like what ends up happening is people have these these perceptions of things must be darker in shadow, and so they make things they overcompensate that, and things must be lighter in uh, light areas. So they again overcompensate that. Once you've kind of nailed down what's the value range in a, a shadow, then you can stay pretty committed to that, uh, and it will be pretty convincing. And just stay consistent to that. It's this perception. Uh, it's an illusion. I I talk about it a lot in, in my courses, but uh, I can't get too much into it because lightning round. But that's pretty much my answer is, yes, local values in the shadows are pretty consistent. Local values in your lights are pretty consistent. And just get really good at that and focus on that. Word. Cool. Yep, that was all the questions that I had after the cutout line. Sorry, guys, if you guys put something after. But did that other person line. Did the other person get back to you, though? Uh, no, they didn't write back, so they might they might be. They're probably life drawing right Here. now. <laughs> yeah, let, let me think about that question though yeah yeah okay, so whoever we'll, we'll wrote that come back uh, creative... next time we stream and come back with an example and we'll, and we'll remember come back to youtube though because youtube is where it's at like, I, I can, the, the only way that i can think about it is that if if you're so 
driven by <laughs> your technical <laughs> skill that you won't let like it's like one of those things people were too focused on the the structure <clears throat> it's like that that seemed like the kind of problem that he's but it, no but then it's like i don't know uh, yeah that <laughs> that person please uh come back on a different stream and try to yeah, ask that back. question so i can All answer right. it as best i can um we're... How was the turnout? How did, how many people showed up for the pretty the good? Uh, we had a overall. Good, about, I don't know how to see the number though. 80, 80, no, I have eighty four. I have eighty four. Yeah, eighty four on YouTube, sixty four on Facebook, hey, uh, about, around twenty on Twitch. Oh, there you go. Why don't, you why don't, why don't you and John just like like hold down each one? So I, I call I call YouTube. I hold down the YouTube crap. <laughs> well, what, not, you guys aren't always around, and you guys are. I really yeah. appreciate your help though. But like, uh, yeah, that sounds fire. If if we can get all three of you guys, YouTube for Kalen. Uh, Facebook for John, and then Twitch for. Mike. I need Twitch to show up then, man. <laughs> I need yeah, something to do. Twitch is fine, man. It's all YouTube, bro. Sorry. So man. maybe, maybe you I could know, be. Kayla maybe... so quick to hop on the. YouTube I'm gonna talk train. so much shit on Twitch, dude. I'm gonna like sure, whatever, bro. Start a, start a, start a, dude, I'm gonna get my YouTube homies to show up. It's going to happen. Uh, I'm gonna start a platform so war. <laughs> you guys. All right, guys. I gotta head the out. Same stream. Oh. All right, John don't. can care less. He's like, yeah, John's like, whatever, man. <laughs> I will take guy. out Facebook first. My dad is the, Is that a child? Yeah. Is, it, is that Olivia? Yeah. Dude, she sounds artificial when she talks on that. Ooh, she sounds like a wolf. Yeah. All right. Anyways, guys, appreciate you. Love you very much. Everybody showed up. Thank you very much for showing up. Appreciate you all too. And uh, yeah, hit up Mike if you guys want to get that Discord link. You can follow him on Facebook. Is it up Brainchild TV? Yes, yeah, Brainchild TV. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, he'll he'll help you out and hook you up. He's one of the admins, super helpful dude. Anyway, but all right, now, okay. let me go ahead and stop all these. Okay, and stop also, Twitch. If tomorrow, if tomorrow's still uh, doing it, then um, oh yeah, check out tomorrow's yeah, tomorrow. We'll tomorrow. Find out where tomorrow's at if he's still streaming. Okay, cool. Um, right, latest guys, I'm stopping right, Twitch. Latest you. Twitch fools. Latest Facebook homies. No, oh, what? And then latest YouTube. I'm gonna give the YouTube guys a secret. Only to the YouTube followers. Oh my <laughs> god! For all the Facebook and Twitch people, they are not going to hear this last part of it. You guys are my favorite. Oh, oh. I'm just kidding. I'm just Favoritism. kidding. I'm just kidding. I uh, appreciate everybody. Thank you guys for the support. See you guys in the next streams. Latest. <laughs>